Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back to the fourth lecture of chapter three. And in this lecture, I want to introduce some ideas that will enable us to discuss the concept of independence of path for line integrals. Okay, in the last lecture, we introduced the notion of a path integral, the integral of the dot product of a vector field along a path, at each point along a path, between two points on the path. And we worked out a particular example. Now, if I just want to integrate between the two points, does it matter which path I take? If it doesn't, that would be really nice in a lot of cases. Generally it does, but there are very, some very important um, situations in mechanics where it does not. And I want to talk about what those are today. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to introduce an idea that you may not have experienced yet. But it's an easy idea. The notion of the partial derivative of a scalar valued function of a vector variable. So this is a function that's a function of x, y, and z, for example, but it's just a number. And so we know how to differentiate functions, scalar valued functions of one variable, and this is kind of the same idea. If we want to compute the partial derivative of the function with respect to x, let's say, well, we view y and z as fixed, and we just differentiate them with respect to x in the usual way of differentiating a function of a single variable. So, look at a couple of examples. Phi of xy, z is xy sine z. Phi of xy is x over y. And we'd like to compute the partial derivatives. So the partial derivative of phi with respect to y, okay, of the first one, well, if I view x and z as fixed, that's just x sine z. And we can write that out in the usual difference quotient way. I'm going to compute the partial derivative of phi with respect to x. That's just y sine z. And then for the other function, which I, I called phi also, which is not the best notation, but uh, you can check that these give you the partial derivatives with respect to a variable, meaning all the other variables are held fixed, and you just differentiate with respect to that chosen variable in the usual way. Now. I did that because I want to introduce two ideas, the gradient of a scalar valued function of a vector variable. And you're going to learn a lot about gradients when you learn about uh, calculus of several variables. So let phi of x, y, z be a scalar valued function of the vector variable. The gradient is just a vector and the vector is of the vector of partial derivatives. Now, important to realize, phi is scalar valued, but its gradient is vector. Now, the curl of a vector field, now this seems a bit bizarre, first time you've ever seen it, of a vector variable. We call that the gradient, nabla cross gradient symbol, nabla, cross A, and that's given by this vector expression here. All right, that looks like I've just pulled it out of the air. I haven't, but it seems that way for now. Okay, let's get back to line integrals. If the vector field A involved in the line integral that we're wanting to compute 
is the gradient of a scalar valued function of a vector variable, then the line integral is independent of the path. Now, I still need to explain that a bit more. But if a is a gradient of phi, its curl is zero. There's a lot of deep mathematics going along, going on here that I don't have time to explain, but you hopefully will learn them in more advanced courses. But let's look at this path independence notion. Let's integrate a dot dr between two points p1 and p2, and I have not specified the path. And, and if you read what I said about the art of computing the line integrals, we need to be able to parameterize the path in a way that's consistent with a dot dr, and we can do the integrals that result from that. But in this case, a is gradient of phi. Gradient of phi dot dr. Well, dr is dx i plus dy j plus dz k. And the definition of gradient of phi is just the vector partial derivative. So grad phi dot dr is this. But this is just the total differential of a function phi. And look, we from the fundamental theory of calculus, if we integrate this, the, the, the function, the total differential of a function, it's just the value of the function, the difference of the function at the two endpoints. So the path between, in this particular case, when a is the gradient of phi, the path between p1 and p2 does not matter in the computation of the line integral. And if we can find phi such that the gradient of phi is a, then computing this thing is very easy. Okay, we're going to see a lot of examples of this. I've explained these things in a little more detail and some of the mathematical issues in the rest of the chapter, but I'm not going to go through that. I encourage you to read that. I'll stop here now, and in the next lecture, so we finished the main material of this chapter, and in the next lecture I will talk about the problems at the end of this chapter. So bye for now.